Hi, I'm Mike Elliott. You're watching CEO Roadshow. In this episode, we're joined again by Mr. Scott Poulter. He's CEO of Pacific Green Technologies, ticker PGTK. The Pacific Green Technologies Group is becoming a world leader in providing sustainable, clean tech solutions to help solve climate warming, green energy, and resource scarcity challenges. Uh, with its patented technology, Pacific Green Technologies is able to offer a wide range of environmental technologies for renewable energy, marine scrubbing, waste to energy, desalination, and concentrated solar power. Uh, good afternoon, Scott, and welcome back to the show. Good afternoon, Mike. Nice to see you again. You as well. So exciting news last week. Uh, you announced PGT has acquired Energy Limited, a designer of battery, battery energy storage systems. So first, uh, can you tell us who these guys are and uh, you know, tell us a little bit about what they do? Sure, Mike. Uh, energy uh, was uh, uh, a startup of about a year ago. Uh, the two principals of it, uh, Gareth Gawley and um, James Grattan, were out of a company called Line Jump. Line Jump were a battery um, and energy uh, trading company that had assets um, that it managed and uh, developed. But more specifically, it had a battery energy storage system technology for. Um, the integration and the trading platform. That company got acquired by uh, Shell as part of their um, energy trading uh, group, in fact, their electricity trading platform. And so, and the guys wanted to uh, go on their own into a startup. Obviously, this year in 2020 has seen quite a lot of turmoil with COVID. So, a lot of their plans that they were developing had started and were moving forward pretty aggressively. And they saw that you know um, the way for them to accelerate their development um, was to join Pacific Green. Um, they were you know, working with battery suppliers in China, um, as well as running and developing the software platform themselves, and you know the various other elements of the process. And so, by fusing themselves and joining the Pacific Green Group um, of companies, it allows them to accelerate that by utilizing our joint venture with uh, Power China running through our uh, management office in Shanghai. We're currently going through a bit of a restructure there so that you know we're bringing in a lot of new uh, personnel, specifically with battery energy storage system experience, um, electrical engineers, software coders, and, and the actual physical hardware battery guys. So we're seeing a change quite through the group right now in terms of um, our focus and Obviously, the battery sector and the energy storage sector is pretty top of mind as we're seeing um, a, a, quite a, a very aggressive transition to the renewable space, uh, specifically with a lot of the electricity demand over the last year coming down during COVID-19 and foreseen to be coming down for a little while before it comes up. So it's a good moment for the world to take stock and to grab hold of the opportunity to develop a renewable energy strategy country by country. And we see in every one of these, you know, one of the things um, for the fast growth and and the potential growth of this sector of battery energy storage systems, or BESS as they're called, Mike, is the fact that, uh, you know, really the uh, renewable sector is not as predictable as burning fossil fuels was. So when you turned on a power plant at eight o'clock in the morning and you ran it for 8,000 hours a year for coal uh, or burning heavy fuel, um, it was pretty predictable. Whereas the renewable sector, when it's sunny, it produces. When it's when it's night, it doesn't produce for solar. And with the wind, when it's windy, it's producing. And when it's not windy, it doesn't. So energy uh, storage systems or battery energy storage systems, as a, a kind of um, in tandem or in hybrid combination with those bits of technology, is really going to be the future. And really, quite a big cornerstone to the global renewable strategy. Yeah, it makes sense. So it's like an infrastructure play. So, I, I mean, you really kind of answered my next question, which is why this acquisition and why now? I think you really got into that, you know, with regards to how the market's shifting and renewables. And uh, But anything else you, you would want to add to that answer, maybe, in terms of why now? For Why now? I think, you know, we, um, for certain, we have seen the change for uh, the, the marine space. Um, in 2020, and so it allowed us to take uh, stock on uh, various parts of the market where we saw substantial growth. We also saw large barriers to entry. You know, uh, building a battery energy storage system factory 
uh, has phenomenal amounts of capital expenditure. And again, in the Pacific Green model, we're looking to utilize existing factories through relationships with, uh, that we have, that we built through the joint venture with Power China. So it allows us to do a similar kind of copycat of what we did and what we saw in the marine sector, where we grew year on year from a 2 million to 130 million plus uh, revenue. We expect to be able to uh, repeat an even more dramatic growth potential here with the battery energy storage systems because the factories that we're working with are established in China. Uh, interestingly enough, you know that uh, China today produces 69% of the world's lithium ion batteries. Um, and in fact, you know, so as a consequence, our pool of factory supplies that we're working with is much greater. Um, and as you're seeing, these big names, world uh, leading energy storage and battery supplier names, building new factories with vast amounts of capital uh, required. What we're doing is we are basically uh, purchasing components and sourcing components in China. We're then going to manage our own design assembly process, utilizing the guys from energy in terms of their capability and background. And then secondly, working with uh, one or two of the um, uh, Chinese uh, suppliers and engineering companies to be able to put together a very competitive and a very compelling uh, energy battery package. And, and to that extent, Mike, what we're seeing already, and we've only just started going, is we've had a substantial amount of inquiries, mainly from people that we know, um, who have seen and followed over the last months our kind of process of moving towards this area as we've gone out, done research in the market. We've looked at specific locations in terms of geographic uh, targets in short term, mid term and long term. We've seen niches in the market where we see opportunity. And then we've seen the geopolitics of the Chinese source batteries against either Korean or European made where that has some added value rather than being considered a negative. And that would be our primary first targets that we've got. So today, you know, we're, we're um, our sales team that we have internationally, we have, you know, guys on the road in Australia, in Europe, uh, North America, in India, um, and, and in the Middle East. And we're now going through the education process on the business development. But quite frankly, the end customer base isn't dissimilar to those that we're in communication with and, and discussion with already for other renewable technology. And what types of projects? So are we looking at here? So small commercial project projects, large, uh, you know, grid projects. I mean, so, so are you trying to facilitate the connection between these uh, renewable energy installations like solar and wind and and their connection to the grid. So you're trying to store that power as it, as it comes in and then distribute it evenly to the grid or, or what what types of infrastructure projects are you guys looking looking to tackle? Well, the, 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 the business and the industry is broken into what's called behind the meter and in front of the meter. So a behind the meter would be for a, a corporate commercial partner who wishes to store energy for their own benefit for their own purpose. Uh, so they may have today uh, a PV farm that produces a certain amount of energy um, at a, a cost effective price. And the battery is, uh, is part of that. And then in front of the meter is whereby people are um, traders, energy traders or electricity traders more specifically, um, are buying the battery, uh, uh, sorry, buying the electricity from the grid to charge the battery when it's cheap, i.e the winds blowing heavily, the sun's out and the, you know, the electricity um, on the sort of the next hour, next two hours, next 10 hours um, is offering a very low price. So they will buy, they will store that energy in the battery itself and then they will sell it back to the grid when it's dark um, or when the wind's not blowing and there's a premium to that price. So we're seeing two distinctively different types of customer base. Um, in terms of the inquiries we have in today, and we have probably, you know, we haven't really kind of been physically actively marketing, but just through the negotiations we're having in China and, you know, the work we're doing with uh, and the discussions and during the negotiation stage with energy, you know, a number of things that they were in discussions with and potential counterparties they were talking to are now coming through the sort of Pacific Green family has allowed us all to start to look at, uh, you know, the various kind of categories of business. And I think, you know, we will see um, big, large scale propositions. You know, Australia 
uh, has, a, has a large discrepancy in that value chain between the buy and the sell on the electricity. Um, and so we're consequently, you know, we have quite a lot of in interest out of Australia. India, we're starting to see quite a significant amount of interest come in out of there. Um, and we expect that probably within the Indian marketplace, we will do a sort of sub-assembly process and then we will you know, market uh, through uh, an Indian partner of some nature. We will define the wrapper, we will define the burger, we will define the box and we will assemble it. But each component is made by a third party um, and, uh, and able us to achieve a low cost product uh, and a low overhead product. So we're able to grow quite exponentially if required and as required and as we anticipate. And secondly, we're using our own QC teams, our own QA management uh, and production guys to be able to then oversee that to make sure that everything we deliver comes in at the same kind of uh, same model, no matter whether we use one factory or we use another. Um, and what we anticipate is, you know, that over the next period, we'll probably work with maybe three to four factories. Um, and that will be based on different size, uh, different opportunities, the different legislations in different countries. So some of those factories have different styles and different uh, kite marks, as it were, in order to be able to meet the requirements in each different country. Well, Scott, you foresaw an opportunity in marine scrubbers years before the IMO initiated their new emissions mandate and managed to carve out a highly lucrative business in marine scrubbers. So you have a track record for spotting profitable trends in the renewable sector. Do you think this is the best trend to bet on for the near future as the market for renewable energy heats up? I, I think for Pacific Green right now, I think this is a, an opportunity um, and a marketplace that the lead time for the production of these new factories is causing some supply issues. Um, we're seeing that there is a large scale demand. Um, I mean, interestingly enough, I think there's something like 70 new factories coming on stream in the next 24, 36 months, of which predominantly most of those are coming out of uh, Asia and China being the most uh, the leader of that. So we see that, you know, whilst uh, other people are ramping up and having to put vast scales of investment in, you know, we're able to take a light touch investment, uh, relatively speaking, compared to our um, potential competitor base and be able to at day one walk in with a quality product uh, with reference plants around the world already. So, so most of the sort of traditional barriers to entry, we're able to leapfrog over um, and we're able to then, you know, start to utilize the distribution, the, um, our own team and our own kind of vertical operation internally in the same way we did in Marine. And so we don't see any differences in the, the product um, or the approach to the product that we, we took in the marine sector. Um, it's just that the physical end product is different and the sector itself is a 10, 15, 20 times the size of the marine scrubbing business. So, you know, we have, uh, we, we can see, you know, already today, uh, we have probably more inquiries today than we've sold scrubbers today. So Scott, um, with, with all these new suppliers coming online in the in battery energy storage and a lot of big manufacturers that are going to be bidding on these projects, you know, as a new entrant to the market, what do you think really sets you guys apart from a competitive standpoint? You know, how are you going to competitively bid on some of these bigger projects and uh, how are you going to carve out market share? I think there's three or four elements to that, uh, Mike. I mean, one is um, we aren't carrying substantial amounts of overhead as an organization relative to the size of the bid, bid campaign that we'll be making. So, you know, we will be factoring in a very low overhead model. Um, I think also, you know, more specifically, as, as I mentioned earlier, that the, the manner that we source the componentry and assemble, again, adds to that. So we're taking the layers out of this process. Um, but, you know, it was interesting. I was reading the other day, uh, I think it was in The Economist, a quote on a, Bo a Bloomberg number that said that 77% of the world's uh, cell capacity was already coming out of China. So I anticipate that probably, you know, no matter if we're bidding in other countries against other Western brands or uh, Eastern brands or whatever they are, probably the likely is likelihood is that those cells are, you know, are probably being sourced in similar places to ourselves. So I think as the market becomes a lot more educated into the process and a lot more educated into the componentry that make up of these things, 
they'll start to see the competitive advantages we have um, by being nimble as an organization. You know, we're a very uh, entrepreneurial, uh, low uh, administered business with the um, vertical uh, production capabilities without actually owning that structure. And I think not owning the physical um, factory in the next period of time for the, our growth in this sector is going to be quite critical to us. It's going to allow us to be flexible in the bids we make. It's going to allow us to be very nimble in our approach. And we're not going to have to force down a single production line. You know, and I use the analogy of what, of what we did in the marine sector, which is we went to eight factories. We had different factories that we were working on different sizes of scrubber or sizes of order which allowed us to identify a client's opportunity and then to direct it to the most relevant factory. And even at the same time, our production management team, QC team, QA team, would make everything look like it was coming out of the same place. And so we put a, we ran our own uh, copycats across them. But for an example, we have one factory that only produced maybe two scrubbers a month. So it works for a very small, trial order with a client and we have another factory that does eight or nine um, scrubbers a month and we anticipate some kind of similarities to the approach that we're going to take for the battery energy storage system business because we don't think that one size will fit all as a factory production system well so that makes a lot of sense so that that establishes that uh those competitive advantages the other thing i see is as you start talking about this is the timing is impeccable you know if you'd we're a company that got to either solar or wind, you know, too early, maybe a decade ago. A lot of a lot of big companies failed because they were too early to the game. It looks like your timing is perfect because of the demand for renewable energies and the fact that they, they need these storage capabilities. And also, I've, I've read some things that, you know, uh, everybody hears about Tesla as, as a large manufacturer of batteries. But a lot of them are shifting their manufacturing capacity away from that commercial market and, and towards the uh the electric vehicle market, correct? So, I mean, there's a there's almost a vacuum there which you could fill. Of course, and we, and we see that you know the demand for <clears throat> electric battery you know, batteries for either electric vehicles or for every aspect of life uh, is is putting demand on capacity. You know, and hence what I mentioned earlier about the volume of new factories being built worldwide. You know, I mean, if you take it's a good you, you mentioned there about the solar industry, people get in too early. You know, it's an int interesting dynamic that uh, photovoltaic on average has gone down by approximately about 80% in the last decade. You know, so the the real benefit in the long term out of all of this is going to be the consumer. And the consumer is going to get the benefit of the learnings, the efficiencies, the competitive landscape that everybody's fighting for because it will start driving down the price. And today what's occurring in the short term is you know, there is such demand that's outstripping supply um, that, you know, we will see very, very rapid growth and we will see new entrants to the market who will have the ability to find niche of their niche because of the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of the established players, you know, Tesla, you just mentioned, you know, a lot of their demand is for the use in their own automotive sector. But you're seeing people uh, polarizing the type of battery uh, energy systems that they're developing for specific parts of it. So we can see that there's enough area for everybody to, to work within. And I think in our own minds, we're kind of starting to formulate a very clear idea of where Pacific Green's gonna fit into that. That's amazing, incredible market opportunity. You guys really, I mean, from an investor standpoint, look very undervalued right now with, with um, your success in Marine Scrubbers. And you know, you kind of taking that same model now and carving out another niche in, in a highly lucrative sector that's gonna have even more market opportunity and your manufacturing relationships that will allow you to be uh, very cost competitive, which is going to be the bottom line when as these projects start to go, get underway. Um, that's all the questions I had for today, Scott. Anything else you want to tell investors before we close? Not really. I mean, we, we focused in this conversation on the battery energy storage systems. And, and the reality is, Mike, you know, we still have, you know, a, a $60 million order book that we're working through in the marine sector. Um, you know, it's a very profitable business. We have just recently taken on uh, Xavier Lara, who's one of the world's leaders in the CSP, the concentrated solar power business. And we can see now each of our different um, divisions of the company starting to round out. I think the opportunity that's occurred for PGT during COVID is it allowed us to be able to identify the opportunities 
discuss and, I, and come up with a very clear strategy. Uh, the strategy is the same or whatever sector we're in. Um, and, then, and then the last part to really where we are is I think, you know, we're un, you mentioned we're very undervalued at the moment. I think one of the biggest difficulties Pacific Green has had is that obviously, you know, uh, it's been very difficult for people to understand our model. And I think that's been one of the biggest uh, issues we face. But I think this is now a very clear strategy. Well, no matter what technology we have, we apply a low capital cost basis in order to be able to grow quickly. And we use the relationships we have that have been uh, demonstrated a very quick growth in, a, in the marine sector. And we can see that we can accommodate that here too. So all of the aspects, I think that's really our, our, our key selling point to the PGTK business. Yep, couldn't agree more. Scott, pleasure as always. Uh, look forward to catching up with you again soon for another update. In the meantime, take care and be safe. You too, Mike. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Everybody, we've been watching CEO Roadshow. And again, you're talking to Mr. Scott Poultry, CEO of Pacific Green Technologies, ticker PGTK. The Pacific Green Technologies Group is becoming a world leader, providing sustainable clean tech solutions to help solve climate warming, green energy, and resource scarcity challenges. With its patented technology, Pacific Green is able to offer a wide range of environmental technologies for renewable energy, marine scrubbing, waste to energy, desalination, and concentrated solar power. To learn more about them, please visit their website at www.pacificgreentechnologies.com. Thanks for watching CEO Roadshow.